Okay guys, so in this tutorial basically what I'm going to show you how to do is create a basically I'm, I'm going to show you how to create realistic clouds in Vue um, so that you can use them in I don't know, your view scenes, um, whatever you choose to use them for. You can use them for, for plenty of things. Um, the, this picture here is basically what you're going to end up with at the end. It's not going to look identical to this because Vue creates things randomly. Uh, nothing you ever create in Vue generally, I mean, will ever be the same. It might look, have the same type of characteristics or features, but it's not going to be the exact same thing that you made uh, previously. So, the first thing you want to do is open up View here. Alright, and once View loads, you'll have all the basic things that you normally have in View, your ground plane, your main camera, and your sun. Uh, the first thing that I did whenever I created this, and we'll just do it just so that we kind of have the same starting point as whenever I made the clouds, is I created what's called an infinite terrain, and to make an infinite terrain, uh, you just right click here uh, on this button, and it'll pop up uh, this window. Uh, there's a bunch that you can choose from, you know. Uh, depending on what type of landscape you're going for, uh, you choose what's necessary. But uh, for this, what I chose was Mountain Flat, and uh, you just hit OK, and it'll basically just uh, load it and generate the terrain mesh. <clears throat> and, uh, okay, so yes, you do want to create an infinite procedural terrain. And um, you don't have to do this, it's your call, but uh, this is basically just asking you if you want to add uh, sea level or sea level to your train. And I always hit yes, you don't have to. By default, it actually turns the sea off, so you don't see it unless you turn or unless you click this button to turn the sea on, at which point, you know, up here, generally, you'll get something. Yeah. Right, there's my C. Okay, so if you don't know what an infinite terrain is, basically what it is is forever, basically as far as your camera can take you, uh, which is essentially to infinity uh, on this plane, you will have terrain. Uh, it will always be there, no matter how far your camera goes. <clears throat> so, back to what this lesson is actually about. Up here is the atmosphere editor. Uh, what you want to do is left click here to bring up the atmosphere editor and the first thing I always do in the atmosphere editor is go to light and um, turn on global radiosity it just generally makes all of your renders look better um, and as far as the clouds go what I normally use uh, are uh, the thick cumulus layer and to get to the thick cumulus layer you just click this add button here and it'll be under clouds uh, spectral 2 and then the thick cumulus layer is this one here and you just hit OK and eventually it'll load OK so it's loaded now um, the defaults that Vue has in here, I don't particularly like. I mean, they, they're they okay um, from a distance, but I, I don't really like them, especially if you're getting close. They don't really look all that great. So what you want to do is uh, you're, you're going to change pretty much all of these settings. Altitude will keep it one kilometer. That's fine. Uh, the height uh, should be up to one kilometer as well. The cover, uh, generally this is like way, way, way too much, 97%. Uh, I'm going to take mine down to 61. The density is always way too high. I'm really not sure why the density is so heavy by default. I always take mine down to 50%. Uh, the opacity should be upped, in my opinion, to... 
somewhere around 80 to 90. Sharpness, uh, I keep it at 25. Feather, 30 is fine. Um, detail, I generally push up about 10% to 72%. The uh, altitude variations is fine at 100. Ambient lighting is fine at 30. And shadow density is fine at 61. <clears throat> the other thing you need to change here is the scale. Uh, rather than 0.2, it should be 2.0. <clears throat> Uh, that makes clouds a little thicker. As you can see over here, they already look a little more realistic, <clears throat> even from this distance. Um, uh, one other thing that I find is good to change is some of these settings in here. Uh, the sky mean altitude is set at 3 kilometers. <clears throat> Generally, I have that set at 6.54 kilometers. Uh, the decay is at 80%, that's fine. <coughs> Sorry about that, I got a little bit of a cold. Uh, the decay mean should be at 5.81 kilometers. <coughs> the uh, haze ground density, I think I generally put that at 25. At 25. Haze mean is fine. Uh, we don't need any fog, so we'll leave that off. <clears throat> and uh, the glow intensity should be down to 1%. <clears throat> Scattering should be 0.66, as well as the clouds. <clears throat> clouds in a stropy. I honestly don't even know what that word means. <clears throat> if your aerial perspective is not at 1, you should change it to 1. It's pretty important that it's at 1. Otherwise, the rest of these settings are going to look a little off. <clears throat> also, I generally don't like my haze color to be this white. It's definitely better if it's a grayer color. And this fog color, I generally turn down to a darker, uh, dark, darkish gray, I guess. Okay, and now you're okay. Um, your cloud should look kind of like this at this point in your preview window over here. Um, uh, the next thing we're going to do is just take our camera. And uh, if you've never done this before, if you highlight your camera, over here you can adjust the height. Uh, right now our camera is at 1.8 uh, meters uh, relative to the ground. And uh, what we're going to do is change this to 5 kilometers. So basically at 5 kilometers, we're up in the clouds. As you can see, we're uh, now up above them. And uh, if we back out here a little bit, you can see... Okay, there we go. You can see we're above them. Uh, all right. So the next thing we'll want to do is rotate the camera so that it's looking down. And now we're at a downward angle. By the way, if you didn't know, if you hit R on your keyboard, you're going to change the rotation tool. If you hit M, you'll change the move tool. And if you press S, you'll change the scale, but uh, that doesn't really apply to cameras very much. So now that we're looking down, you can see we've got the sky and the landscape below us. And you can do this with pretty much anything. I mean, you don't have to have a uh, infinite terrain here. You can have a, ter you know, a normal terrain that you've created, a procedural terrain, uh, your standard terrain, and just edit it and... Uh, then put some clouds right above it, but that's pretty much all there is to creating realistic clouds, is just those settings. Um, I mean, this is all relative to what you do if you want, uh, if you're wanting to like 
look at it from a really far out perspective, maybe at the uh, <clears throat> the level that maybe a spaceship would look at it, then you would want to change these clouds uh, from thick cumulus to uh, maybe one of these planetary cloud bases. This probably won't look very good. And my settings are probably going to get changed. And they did. <clears throat> but, um... Yeah. It, it, it depends on the altitude you're looking at them from and uh, uh, what you're wanting to do with them, but those settings are generally what I use for my clouds. Uh, I generally use thick cumulus clouds for most things whenever I'm creating scenes because I find they look best. Uh, but if you have any other ideas or you know of better ideas, then feel free to let me know. I'm just here to share what I do with you, I guess. So uh, hopefully that was helpful to someone. Hopefully you can make some nice looking clouds, uh, you know, for whatever scene you're creating. And uh, I don't know. Uh, thanks for watching.